What is one tonne of CO2? Hello, my name is Eugene Bryce. I'm with Bryce Energy Services, your expert energy consultant. And the purpose of this presentation is to help your staff understand your business carbon footprint, your targets, and basically what a tonne of carbon dioxide actually relates to in the real world. So, one ton of CO2. These are physical representations, uh, basically uh, a ball filled with air. But the idea is to give you an initial concept, a feel for what one ton of CO2 actually looks like. So, CO2, carbon dioxide, is a gas. So, if you filled a gas at normal pressure, it would take that volume so you can see it's about the equivalent of a two-story house in volume so what is one metric ton of anything basically one one metric ton is a thousand kilograms is one million grams so it's the it's the old joke really which is heavier, a ton of feathers, a ton of bricks, or a ton of carbon dioxide? And the answer is, of course, they all weigh exactly the same because a ton is a ton is a ton. So in this image, we have a standard ton of bricks, just to give an impression, the um, scale of the wheelbarrow next to it. And we have the image from the previous slide of the inflated ball of CO2. So in strict measurable terms these are all the same weight so how many trees are needed for one ton of carbon dioxide a lot of measurements of carbon dioxide footprint are based around number of trees number of trees planted but in, if you really want to understand carbon and carbon tonnage using trees is an inexact science because what is the size of the tree what is the age of the tree what type of tree is it where is it and ultimately what's the final use of the tree because a tree doesn't magic away carbon dioxide the purpose of a tree and a growing tree is that it takes the carbon dioxide from the air and converts it to wood and once that tree dies you then have to understand that the carbon dioxide in that tree gets released back into the environment so it's more of a carbon dioxide sink than a solution so what normal energy use is equivalent to adding one ton of co2 into the air now what i'll do is i'll look at an electric light bulb a kettle boiling an electric kettle and driving so three pretty common activities and we'll see how much of each we can do before adding one ton of co2 to the air now there is some debate over the numbers there always will be but these numbers are based on UK government greenhouse gas conversion factors. So um, you can debate those numbers, but they're used for businesses legal requirements. So they're as good as any to base um, the intent and purpose for this uh, presentation. So electric light bulb, and we're considering the old filament light bulb because it, uh, i think a lot of people still relate to um 60 watts um but we'll also look at the modern equivalent led for the uh, filament light bulb so the uk government um carbon emissions um state that a kilowatt 
hour of electricity is equivalent to 0 0.283 kilograms of carbon. So if we assume a light bulb is a 60 watt light bulb, and the bulb is left on continuously, so consider a, a light bulb in a dark corridor or hallway, um, switched on for one hour, uh, so that's 0 0.06 kilowatt hours, and then the CO2 per hour is basically 0 0.017 kilograms, so Number of hours on for one ton of CO2 equals 58,824 hours. And the equivalent for an LED light is 400,000 hours. So we're simply taking the figure, the carbon kilogram figure of 0 0.283 kilograms per kilowatt hour and multiplying that up by the amount of time or the amount of kilowatt hours um, the light bulb is switched on for. So what we can see here is 58,000 hours is quite a significant number of hours, but also the LED um, is at least five times better than the fluorescent light bulb, which is why everybody's changed to LED lights. An electric kettle. So again, we're using the figure of 0 0.283 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Now the assumptions are that the kettle is a 2000 watt or two kilowatt kettle, and it's filled with cold tap water, and that it takes approximately five minutes to boil. So total kilowatt hour to boil the kettle, five minutes divided by 60 times two kilowatts is 0 0.166 kilowatt hours. So converting a single boil to CO2 is 0 0.166 times 0 0.283 kilograms per of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And that gives us a total number of boils of 21,276 which is, again, a very high figure. But if you consider every home in the country, every workplace, and the number of times you have a cup of tea in the day or boil the kettle, that adds up to a considerable, considerable amount of energy um, used and therefore considerable, uh, considerable amount of additional tons of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. Worthwhile touching on the chemistry of burning fuel before we look at the how far you can drive. So I won't linger too long on this, but the, the main point is, uh, is the weight of um, carbon dioxide. So if you imagine uh, a molecule of methane, which is uh, a gas, and it is basically a hydrocarbon. So that means it's a carbon atom with hydrogen and methane is CH4. You have in combustion, you can have to combine that with two oxygen molecules. So oxygen likes to form a molecule with itself. So O2. So when you burn CH4 and two molecules of O2, you get CO2 and 2H2O. So that's two water molecules. So the idea here is that a carbon, a carbon atom, excuse me, a carbon atom weighs 12 atomic units. An oxygen atom weighs 16 atomic units. So therefore, CO2, you're adding the weight of carbon, which was 12, and oxygen, so you have two, which is 16, and 16, which is 32. So that gives you a total weight of carbon dioxide molecule of 44. 
So what we're saying here is that when you burn a kilogram of carbon, you get more than three kilograms of carbon dioxide. Now it will be a gas, but remember back a ton of something is still a ton of something. So a typical fuel tank may have 50 kilograms of carbon that produces 150 kilograms of carbon dioxide. So that's the real takeaway from the chemistry of burning fuel that burning one carbon with the weight of one carbon molecule you effectively get th over three times the weight of carbon dioxide so driving a car number of miles driven per one ton of co2 so one liter of diesel weighs 835 grams so slightly less than um, a kilogram of water it just so liquid diesel is lighter than liquid water so diesel itself consists of 86.2 percent carbon or 720 grams of carbon per liter of diesel so working through our figures um, we therefore get 6135 miles for each one ton of co2 so bear in mind that the equivalent co2 per liter is 200 excuse me 2640 grams so we have 720 grams of carbon which produces 2640 grams of co2 and so for every 6135 miles you drive in a diesel car you produce one ton of co2 and the equivalent figure for petrol is 5244 miles for each ton of co2 so just to summarize some of what we've um, mentioned here. So an old fashioned light bulb can be switched on for 59,000 hours. You can boil a kettle 21,000 times, or you can drive a car 5,700 miles. And that each of them are equal to each other. And each of them is equal to one ton of CO2. So when talking about a business carbon footprint, it's worthwhile considering CO2E. Now, CO2E is carbon dioxide equivalent. So when we talk about climate change and global warming, there are more than carbon dioxide gases that are uh, involved in the process. So as this chart shows, we have methane, which is 10%, uh, nitrous oxide, 4%, fluorinated gases, 2%. So gases contained within fridges and air conditioning systems and carbon dioxide making up 84%. So CO2 equivalent is effectively converting the methane nitrous oxide and the fluorinated gases to an equivalent amount of carbon dioxide. So for example, carbon dioxide has a, a global warming potential of one because it is carbon dioxide. Whereas methane has a global warming potential of 25. So one ton of methane is equivalent to 25 tons of carbon dioxide so you would have to add 25 onto your business carbon footprint if you released one ton of methane and fluorinated gases could have hundreds of be hundreds of times that of carbon dioxide so if you released one ton of a fluorinated gas it could be equivalent to 200 or 400 tons even of carbon dioxide.
So thank you for your attention. I hope you learned a little bit about um, carbon dioxide, what a ton of carbon dioxide is. This was presented by Bryce Energy Services, um, helping businesses understand their energy carbon footprint and happy to help with your business scope one, scope two and scope three. If you would like to contact us, feel free to drop an email to info at bryceenergyservices.com or subscribe or follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter or YouTube. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you'd like to drop any comments or suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Thank you very much.